Hello all, I'm Carrie, and today I want to share with you how I fixed the fit of my Italian gown and why I had to fix it before starting any of the other 30 projects I want to make. I consider this gown a UFO or unfinished object because it never really fit well and I've only worn it once. I originally made it to go over stays that I made myself, which also did not fit well. They turned me into more of a barrel uh, than the ideal 18th century conical shape. Then my dear friend and costuming fairy godmother gave me a set of red threaded 18th century stays which do help me attain that historical shape, but now the gown's fit issues are even more obvious. I can't raise my arms without a lot of bunching at the shoulder and pulling up the entire bodice, which means I have to keep my arms still or continuously adjust the dress. The arm size is too big and the shoulder seam is not well fitted. This also caused gaping at the neckline. I sort of fixed this with a fichu the one time I wore it to an event. The front is very wrinkly because of the poor fit and because I used a very lightweight lining and fashion fabric, so I'll add boning at the front. The bodice is just too big, so I will have to add side seams and take it in. The sleeves are also not well fitted. I started by seam ripping the skirt and the sleeves so I could refit the bodice over my new stays. It was kind of sad to seam rip all of these little top stitching things that I did, but alas, it was necessary in order to separate the bodice and make it fit better. Otherwise I won't wear this gown, it'll just hang out in my closet. And I don't like wasting things like that, especially this beautiful fabric which is my absolute favorite Ikea duvet pattern ever. It's not the exact same as in the Italian gown for the American Duchess Guide, um, but I still love it so much. It's so pretty. So I wanna make this gown something that I will love to wear. I'm even willing to go through Sleevel Hell again, or Sleevel Hades, in order to make this gown fit better. It's an absolute must if I want to actually wear this gown anymore. The easiest fi fix is making a higher waistline. I just folded up the current waistline and clipped it to where I thought it should go, which was about an inch above the original. This helped me get a better sense of where those new side seams should go, which really tested my flexibility as I pinned them on myself. Oh my gosh. Notice how the bodice is wrong side out. This won't work if you are very asymmetrical and you should work with the bodice right side out. I'm not really sure why I did it this way other than I was worried the friction pin would not come out of the fashion fabric even with ironing. I could have fixed this easily by testing, but here I am. I marked the seams with a green friction pen, took, out, took the bodice off, and tried to pin them more symmetrically because with my stays on at least, my torso is pretty symmetrical. And as you can see, I'm definitely struggling with pinning here. I tried to put the side seams toward the back and avoid making the arm size a weird shape, although just taking in the bodice will help make the arm size a bit smaller, which is something I need to do. I also marked where I wanted my new neckline and where I thought the shoulder seams should go, which I'll do here in a minute. But I'm using the, the little clips, which I absolutely love. They're, there's no danger of me pinning myself, which there definitely was with um, the pins themselves. This is why it's good to have a buddy to help you fit an 18th century gown, which happens throughout the American Duchess Guide. However, it's the pandemic and I don't have a sewing buddy that I want to uh, risk being in close contact with me or, you know, me being in date, whatever. Um, so <laughs> what I ended up having to do is just pit, fit the darn gown to myself. And this is just the first step. I'm, I'm just making these markings where I think the uh, sleeve seam should go, but I didn't end up using them as you will see. This is all a process. The second fitting here, I fold over uh, the, the seam towards the back, um, or towards the front, I'm sorry, and then I used a purple friction pen to mark the new seam. So it fits a little bit better, but still not quite as fitted as I want it to be. And I used a different color pen to avoid the confusion with the earlier 
green lines that I drew. I could have just ironed those out, but uh, lazy. And I'm also fiddling here with the waistline again. Eventually I just decide to make the waistline exactly an inch higher. Now I'm pinning more precisely along the purple seam lines and after I do that, I'm going to test the fit again. This is generally a process of fitting, taking off, repinning to uh, make it any little adjustments that I noticed that I could not um, contort my arms <laughs> to make on my actual body. And every time I have to pin the bodice front together. Hello, husband. Okay, now for the scary part. This is when I'm actually going to cut the side seams. There's no going back now. I could not find this exact placement of side seams in any of my books on extant garments, but I'm sure the situation has popped up where a gown gets handed down to a smaller woman, maybe a daughter, and drastic measures have to be taken to make it fit. If you know of any examples of this, please do let me know in the comments. Here I'm also cutting the old waistline stitching off to begin anew. I did not film it, but I did base the new side seams in the lining before back stitching them. Abby Cox should be proud. After smoothing it down, I also basted the fashion fabric over the new side seams before top stitching. Well, more of like a running stitch, but you'll see that here in a second. The basting really did help. I didn't get stabbed a lot by pins, which I normally do, um, and everything felt more secure. And I don't have to take the basting off of the uh, the lining if I don't want to, but I did end up doing that. So here I am uh, top stitching or running stitching um, the fashion fabric side seams. And uh, the side seams again are towards the back, so I don't have, um, they're not super visible from the front. I'm pretty excited to finish this UFO and get rid of that feeling of UFO anxiety, which mine hangs over my head like Mrs. Norris hangs over and pestered Fanny Price in Mansfield Park. So I have to finish this UFO to escape that feeling and Mrs. Norris. Anxiety is good, it drives us forward, but too much and we become demobilized. But I'm still not looking forward to the sleeves part of this process. And taking out those basting threads is so satisfying. I marked where the new waistline should go on the bodice, folded it up, and whip stitched it in place, which you can see from the outside and the, also the inside. This deviates from the instructions in the American Duchess Guide, but it was quicker and I just wanted to move on. Then I reattached the skirt and put the gown on to test the fit again, and it fits so much better. Hopefully you can tell from the big smile on my face, which won't last long. Next, I put the sleeves on and the gown over it to try to fit the sleeves. This is a trick I learned from Amber or Lady of the Wilderness, except you need to have separate shoulder straps like in all extant 18th century gowns I've ever seen, and which I clearly don't have here. So this is an exercise in frustration. Also, I am just not good at pinning sleeves on myself. Here I am descending into Sleevel Hades once again, and I'm getting nervous because this is what uh, troubled me the first time I made the gown. I'm trying to pin it so that I'm not actually pinning my shift or my stays, and it just didn't work. And I'm getting mad. <laughs> and considering giving up for the day and working on something else. I could have gotten a friend to come over and help me do this, and we could have worn masks, but I was determined to make this work by myself. I wanted to feel like an independent seamstress. So. I gave up on that and <laughs> uh, abandoned the sleeveless for a bit and put boning at the bodice fronts to mitigate wrinkling. 
and I figured out how much of a gusset I needed at the underarms to make the arm side more fitted. I top stitched the gusset in place on, at the underarms. I used the Simplicity 8161 pattern by American Duchess as the basis for my Italian gown as well as construction pointers to make it more historically accurate from the American Duchess 18th century guide to dressmaking or guide to 18th century dressmaking. I guess I should say it first or correct since it's right here in front of me. And I also used uh, American Duchess tips um, for turning this pattern into a more historically accurate uh, Italian gown or other 18th century gowns. And one of the things that I did not do, um, you'll notice that in the pattern itself, there's not a separate shoulder strap, but in the book there is, and also in all of the extant garments in the books that I have. So, you know, uh, Janet, Arnold's Patterns of Fashion, Costume Close-Up, and some others, there are separate shoulder straps. Instead, I thought, oh, that's fine. I will change the back, actually I didn't change the back, <laughs> um, other than, uh, no I didn't really change the back at all. I, I changed the front to make sure that it closed um, in the front like an Italian gown and I left everything else pretty much as is, including the sleeves. And so when I actually made the gown and put it on, unfortunately, um, because this whole thing is on the bias, because I followed the grain lines over here, I don't even remember the grain lines in the simplicity pattern, but I ended up, well, I guess I can look over here, can't I? Oh, okay. So I didn't follow these grain lines. I followed these grain lines. However, I left the shoulder strap and the bodice front all in one. And that was a mistake because the shoulder strap was on the bias and it ended up, uh, getting really awkward, especially when I tried to put the sleeves on, which I didn't do that correctly. So, Also, you cannot put the sleeves on in the 18th century way, which of course they t teach you in this book, um, if you do not have a separate shoulder strap. So I've learned since then the gray line is extremely important and your shoulder strap should definitely have uh, be cut on the straight of grain in order to make it stronger. Um, and less flexible for the gown. So that is the uh, one of the major issues that I had to solve or have to solve with this gown to make it fit in a way that I will actually wear it. Now that I am no longer deluding myself, I have to seam rip the shoulder seams. Bless I. But you can see how much more stretch there is when I pull the straps on the bias than when I pull them on the straight so they absolutely have to go. And I'll show you that here in a second. Here I am pulling on the straight of grain, which you can see is not straight up and down on the shoulder strap, where it should be. And here I am pulling, pulling on the bias, which is straight up and down on the shoulder strap. I decided where to cut the shoulder straps off by looking at Extants and the American Duchess Guide. Then I cut new ones that are longer and wider to give myself plenty of space for air. I then fitted those on myself and I didn't film that, but here we go. I am now trying to attach the sleeves in the 18th century way, which means that part of it is connected, the underarm is connected by sandwiching the right sides together. And then you have this weird little switch um, at the place where the shoulder strap meets the rest of the bodice. And the rest of the sleeve is basically sandwiched between the lining for the shoulder strap and the fashion fabric for the shoulder strap. And I've put this on, or I, I kind of pinned it 
and then I put it on and then I adjusted the pinning and then I put it on and now I'm going to adjust the pinning again because there's still a little weird bunching up here and I think it's because I'm going to have to put these little pleats farther back which you're supposed to do anyway and then maybe I can just make the fashion fabric shoulder strap bigger. I still have enough fabric from this Ikea duvet cover that I could do that, I think. Um, or I can see if I can just fold it under, but then that will create more bulk back there, so I don't really want to do that. Having my duct tape double is useful. I just can't pin in it because the pins will get gunky. But I don't want to do that here anyway because I need to be able to take the gown off the duct tape double with the pins still in so I know where to sew. This process took a lot of fiddling because I'm trying to fit it on myself, but I was determined to make it work because otherwise, what has been the point of all of this except to clear away a UFO? Oh yeah, that. Speaking of UFOs, I can only have three at a time glaring at me from wherever I stuff them or my anxiety saps my sewing mojo and motivation. So I had this, this gown had to be done before I could move on to USOs or unstarted projects or objects, of which I have about 30. Yes, 30. Clearing away UFOs gives me a natural high and just clears my mind. How do you deal with UFOs? How many do you have right now? Please let me know in the comments. Sorry, this is blurry. The camera focused on the background instead of what I'm doing, but I didn't notice because I was focused on what I was doing. Now I'm trying on this gown again with the sleeves in place. And they fit so much better. I did end up stretching out the lining a little bit, but that's okay because I will fix that with the shoulder strap fashion fabric. So I have put on the shoulder straps, the fashion fabric, and over here you can see that I have top stitched it down. And over here, it's still just pinned, so I'm going to top stitch that on. But the shoulder straps ended up being little trapezoids, of course. And I made them that shape, basically, because that's the shape they needed to be in order to cover uh, the join between the sleeve and the bodice. And I expected that the back would be bigger, but it's not. It's actually smaller. And that's fine. <laughs> I think I, I might have brought the sleeves in too far. Not for fit, but for the style of that time period. But that's okay. I like the way that they are. They fit much better than they did before. And so I'm basically satisfied. So I'm going to top stitch that other um, shoulder strap down. And I'm basically done with the gown itself. And then I can work on ruffling things make little ruffle tucker, and then ruffles for the sleeves. Here I am top stitching the last shoulder strap fashion fabric to the gown over my much better fitting sleeve, and I'm so excited about that. It is absolutely wonderful to have sleeves that actually fit and allow for range of motion. I'm making this a little bit tighter than the stretched out linen shoulder strap, like I said to kind of help with um, that stretching that occurred on my duct tape double. Unfortunately, the shoulder joint of my duct tape double is slightly larger than mine. But here I am measuring for ye old ruffles. And I didn't actually film the making of the ruffles because I was busy um, watching horror movies with my son. And now I am rehemming the petticoat because it's way too long and kept getting stuck in the buckles or caught on the buckles of my cute little American Duchess shoes, and I can't have that. I probably could have actually hemmed this even higher, but I wanted to make sure I wasn't making a mistake, so this whip stitching didn't really take too long. I think I watched one episode of The Office. And now here I am actually getting ready. So I was going to start the get ready with me portion with just my shift on, but after viewing the footage, I realized you could see way more than I intended. So here I am spiral lacing my red threaded stays with the stomacher already in place to keep this kid friendly, y'all. 
I've also already got my American Duchess Clock stockings and Kensington shoes on because putting those on after my stays is possible, but not super fun. The spiral lacing is pretty easy and I, I, I much prefer that. Also, front lacing stays are awesome. Here I am putting on my undercoat, or under petticoat rather, which is just made from a cheap, stiff cotton. I didn't make the ties long enough, so there's a bit of a struggle. Then the split bum, which I also use the American Duchess Guide to pattern and make. And I actually made this from the other side of the Ikea duvet cover. Next comes my cute little dumpster fire pocket I made with a kit by So Steam. I absolutely love this pocket. And then my bright blue petticoat, which is made from Supima cotton from Joann's. Very soft, very nice quality, almost shiny cotton that almost looks like silk taffeta, but it doesn't have near the body, but that's okay. It was a lot cheaper and I like it. And you can just throw it in the wash if you spill tea on it, which I did at the one event that I went to. And now finally for the actual gown itself. Sorry I didn't film making the ruffle. I did that while watching, like I said, horror movies with my son uh, and also actually joining different sewing groups on Zoom. And I, I just forgot to film it, but I used the instructions in the American Duchess Guide. So they are there if you want to make a ruffle tucker or sleeve ruffles for your own Italian gown. I'm pinning the gown closed which gives me a little bit more flexibility. And I actually really like this. At first I was intimidated by using pins, but now I find it to be extremely useful. And now I'm trying to put on the wig. And I'll do it right the first time to put the wig cap on. This would be impossible to do after putting on the gown as it was before I fixed the fit. But as you can see, I now have plenty of range of motion for my arms. Success! And now my little jellyfish cap. I'm using straight pins to make sure my cap stays in place while trying not to pin my scalp. And finally, my necklace that I found at the thrift shop. And I'm ready for a trip to Colonial Williamsburg, which is where I was this time last year. Sigh. Or just a trip to my garden because pandemic. My beautiful weedy jungle haven of a garden where flowers are still blooming and raspberries are still ripening even in October. But also mosquitoes are still biting so that's annoying. Yum. I consider this refitting process to be a success and the end results make me so happy. I mean, I can even dance in it and raise the roof, y'all. I'm excited for future events so I can wear this ensemble with friends when we can do such things again in person. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel.